So I'll never forget the first time I felt like God spoke to us to come to LA to start a church. We were ready to do that. We were excited to go. But our daughter had just been born and she received a diagnosis of a rare brain condition. And so Julie and I felt like we weren't really prepared, strong enough, ready to launch a church. And I was preaching at a church in El Paso, Texas with Jensen Franklin. He preaches this unbelievable message and the whole time he's preaching, I'm weeping because I'm feeling like God's saying it's time to go. We talked to our parents and our pastors and, and we made the decision and we announced on Instagram. So we posted a photo of our nine month old son, Winston at the time with the LA Dodgers hat on and said, we're moving to LA to start this church, Zoe Church. I think 30 people moved from Seattle to LA to help us start this church as then volunteers. We moved to LA September 1st, 2014. We started in our living room with 11 people. From the first night, I said, we're gonna start a church called Zoe Church. And so we grew from 11 to 85 was the most people we got in our living room. And I remember one night, the last night we met in our living room, I saw a guy in our house and I just thought, that man should never be in our house. I don't know who he was, I just kind of had that feeling like, we've outgrown the house. So we moved the next week and we started renting a church in Santa Monica off Yale Street. We'd meet there every Tuesday night. We'd worship and I'd preach and I'd talk about this church we're gonna start called Zoe. And then August 21st, 2015, we launch Zoe at One Oak off Sunset Boulevard. There's lines down Sunset. Room was jam packed, floor to ceiling. And the security guard told one of our guys that night, we've never seen more people in this club than tonight. I thought it was pretty awesome until the next day, the owner of the club emailed me and he thought we were, he had agreed to let us do church because he thought we were gonna be this little Bible study. But he emailed me, he said, you can never meet at our club again. You're too big of a liability. And I was like, too big of a liability? So that was Monday morning. We didn't find a venue to meet until Friday afternoon when we signed a contract to meet that Sunday at the L. Ray Theater where we would spend the next four years meeting every Sunday. And we launched our Her Ministry, we launched our conference, we launched our college, we launched merch, we went on tours, we launched our Valley location, we outgrew the L. Ray, we had to move to another place called Bancroft in Hollywood. And then we launched our East location, which who would have thought years later would become our main location, Miguel Contreras. In the first four years of the church, the church just took off. And then March of 2020, the world shut down. And I never would have thought that we would not have another Sunday morning service for 17 months. When we could come back, no school would rent to us, no theater would rent to us, nobody would rent to us. In fact, there was a couple of local churches in the area that were so nice, they're like, we're not meeting Saturday nights, or we're not meeting Sunday nights, so we are able to do that at Bel Air, and thank God for Angeles Temple, but we finally came back to church at the Million Dollar Theater. It was a beautiful time just to be able to meet together and, and see what was left. So many people had left LA, so we'd lost so many volunteers and core team. The first year come back, we're just excited to meet and people are coming from all over the place. It wasn't really until the next summer that you could start to really see what all COVID had done to our church. After being at Million Dollar Theater downtown for a year, we went a mile west and we signed a contract to be at the Miguel Contreras Learning Complex. I'm telling you, when we first got back to Miguel inside, I could just tell we had finally hit our lowest rock bottom as a church, and we are now going to be able to start to finally build back what once was. We're starting to build at Miguel, and we're getting stronger, and you're getting faith in the room, and, and we're able to bring back our conference, and we got so strong, we were able to launch the West, and you could just feel faith is rising, hope is rising. So I get excited about year nine because the year nine in the Bible represents completion. We went through four years of abundance, four years of testing, and now we're ready to walk into a new season. I think year nine to me represents that we're moving into what God has called us to do, and that is this building, Highland Park. I really believe that the best is yet to come. If we have a church that is leaning in and excited about who God is and what God's word says, I don't think that the gates of hell can prevail against us. The last four years has set us up 
for such a time as this.